In reality, the money you see in your current bank account does not physically exist. This is not a secret or a lie. It is the nature of the system itself. Most of the money in banks exists only as numbers. And if tomorrow all customers try to withdraw their money from the banks, the system would collapse almost immediately because there simply isn't enough real money for everyone. This is not by chance, it is a fundamental mechanism underlying our financial system, fractional banking. Looking back at history in earlier times, rich people preferred to entrust their wealth to goldsmiths or coin makers instead of keeping it in their homes. In exchange, they received a paper receipt guaranteeing they could exchange it for gold or silver whenever they wanted. Eventually, people started to use these receipts directly in trade. But then an interesting trick emerged. The goldsmiths realized that customers rarely wanted to withdraw their money at the same time. Taking advantage of this, they printed more receipts than the real gold or silver they had and lent those papers out with interest. Over time, this approach moved to banks and the system evolved even further. Now, most of the loans that banks issue are not based on real reserves. They are created on paper. So when a loan is given, it is as if new money is made out of thin air. Governments also borrow in this way, paying those debts back with taxes from future generations. Traditionally, people believe that when you deposit money in a bank, it just sits there waiting for you. In reality, the bank keeps only a small portion and uses the rest for various loans and investments. On one side, you deposit money, it gets deposited in another bank, and so on. So the same money is cycled through the system many times. But the majority of this money exists only in the form of debt. In recent years, the rules have changed. In the US, Europe, Canada, and other developed countries, banks are no longer required to hold specific reserves. Instead, new international regulations, the Basel rules, are in place. Now, the main limitation for banks is that they must hold a certain amount of their own capital against risky loans. Instead of holding real money as deposits, when they issue a loan, a new deposit is created. In other words, money is now conjured up through a credit contract. This approach creates serious consequences. On one hand, continuous inflation, your money loses value every year. On the other, society is constantly in a certain amount of debt and finally, a large portion of wealth gets concentrated in the hands of banks and asset owners. Whenever banks face trouble, such as the Great Depression of 1929 or the 2008 financial crisis, governments and central banks inject new money into the economy to save the system. This means if the illusion disappears, the economy itself is at risk. Ultimately, the conclusion is this. The money we see in our daily lives depends on the system's credibility and government regulation. And real wealth is not always the numbers in your bank account. It can be land, skills, jewelry, or other valuable assets. The biggest threat in this system is that everything is based on trust. As soon as trust begins to disappear, the entire order can easily collapse. Therefore, thinking that you can save money blindly without understanding the financial system is risky. To secure your own future, you need to prefer assets that create real value and improve your financial literacy. 
A person who understands the mechanisms behind the money system will never become a victim of signals and illusions.